Right guys, so first of all, we'll start with the structure. So I've got these three pieces of threaded rod. This one on the right is 14 inches long and it's an M12. The only reason that is, is because I wanted it to have a bit more um, stability than the others, but it doesn't have to be. They can all be eight, M8, which these three are. These two here are eight inches and this one on the left is seven inches and they've just been bent there um, where you want them to be bent out because these are gonna be your arms and that one on the left will be your legs you see so that'll be your two arms so you bend them how how where you want your arm coming out and the same with the leg and then this on the left is going to be your stable leg that's attached to the board the boards that i'm using and um, there'll be a template that you can download to give you this but basically the two boards on top are six inches by five inches um, and one's cut into a bit of a pointed shape and then there's a hole through this 12 inch board and i've used these feet um, and just screwed them on. They're just like plastic um, tubes that you can get and I've screwed them onto the board to act as feet but you can always use wood or something like that. So first of all I'm just going to screw on my 14 inch M12 rod using M12 nuts and just making that, making sure that that's securely fastened and really tight. And I'm going to decide where the board is going to go. It's going to go about six inches from the bottom. And so I'll put a nut on there and then the board on and then one on the top and just screw that down really tight. Now I didn't do this beforehand, but I should have made two holes here for the arms. So just very close to the sides where the other two holes were. I'm just going to make two M8 holes with my drill and then just screw on these two arms. And again, make sure all of this structure is really tight because it's so important. You don't want anything wobbling later on. So just go around and make sure all that your nuts are nice and tight. I'm just going to add the leg here again. Only has to push up through the board enough to screw that nut on. And then make sure it's nice and tight again. So I'm going to decide where my head's going to go. And I just want it just above where I've got my arms bent out there. So I'm just going to roll a nut down to there and then push the board on top there and a nut on top securely fastened again. It's good to have a bit more protruding away from the board with the head um, so that you've got something that's actually holding the cake on there. So all you need to do now is food safe this whole thing and then we can move on to stage two. Right, so now we're going to move on to the cake. I've got these two six inch cakes, first of all, which are going to be the body. And then I've got another six inch cake for the bottom of the head and another six inch half sphere cake. That doesn't have to be a half sphere. It makes it easier um, to be able to cut it into shape. So I'm going to take the structure that's now been food safe and start to slice the muffin top off these cakes. I've colored this yellow just for a bit of fun to keep in tune with the pudsy design. So I'm just going to put a bit of ganache on my board and slightly on my structure. This will just hold the cake in place. Then I'm gonna cut one of my six inch cakes in half, completely in half, and put some ganache on the inside bit of that. And then the point is, we're just gonna squash these on from either side. So just squash that first one on there from the back. And just let it press into those threaded rods and then do the same with the other half and push it on on the front this time. Going to take some more ganache now and put a thick layer of that on top of the hole first tier and then cut the second tier in half again doing the same thing. I'm not going to cut the muffin top off this one because it's going to help with the curvature up to his shoulder areas. So I'm just going to put some ganache in the middle areas again and sandwich them into the middle of that cake like I did with the first round. The idea with this is that the ganache that you put on the inside of both will then attach to each other and hold the cakes in place as it sets. 
If you want this to set a bit more, if it's a bit hot on the day that you're making it, or you just feel like it's not set in as much, then you can wrap some cling film around this whole central area to hold it in place. So a bit of ganache on the top board as we move on to the head. And I'm gonna take the first six inch round and just push that down on the top of the head. pretty quick for me so I'm going to start to carve it away straight away. First of all at the bottom I'm going to carve this pointed shape towards the front away which um, follows the shape of the bottom board and then I'm just going to round off the sides and I'm going to do the same with the top here. I need to make the bottom a bit of a snout so down to where the ganache is in the middle you're just going to cut downwards. out towards the bum area and then you can curve right in at the bottom just to round it off as it comes close to the board. Remember we're going to, wear a la we're going to add a layer of ganache and sugar paste so there's going to be a little bit more thickness added to this. So you basically just want to get the basic shape here right which is a bit rotund. Pudsy's a little bit chubby so you want a nice rounded The tip with carving guys is to just carve a very little bit at a time. If you find it something that you struggle with, then try to take small pieces off at a time, step back and look at it and make sure you get in the right shape because there's nothing worse than cutting off too much cake and then feeling like you've ruined the piece. If you do do that, never panic. There's lots of ways you can stick that cake back on. Bit of ganache, stick it back on, but obviously it's easier and more structurally sound if you just get the shape right. So just cut off small bits at a time and you can get this nice rounded shape.
Now for the top of his head, we want it into a bit of a point at the top. So where his ears are going to go, we're just going to slice a bit of cake away from here at a slant. So you're going for a slightly a cone head kind of look at the top here, but not very pointy. Just so that the very centre middle is the highest point. And we're just creating a cone shape up to that. Same with the sides, we're just taking a bit off so that the very front middle is the most pointed out area, as that's where the nose is going to be. You can see from that angle, we're really trying to get that nose area to point out. So just cutting down from the top into a slant and then working around the sides of the board to just make sure it's all rounded out nicely. Right, so when you're happy with that shape, I'm going to move on to the covering the whole thing with ganache now. Depending on the heat, as always, um, pick your ganache ratios wisely so that it's nice and sturdy. If it's a bit hot, then make sure it's nice and sturdy and maybe use two layers. I'm going to cover this whole thing in ganache and it's very hot at the moment. So I'm actually going to cover the whole thing with a layer of solid chocolate as well. This is something that I like to do regardless, to be honest, because it gives that extra layer of protection. Um, and a bit more stability so you can just rest assured as you move on to the decorating and adding sugar paste later on that that base structure is structurally sound. Once that's all done, let it set, maybe pop it in a fridge and then we'll move on to part three. Right guys, so part three, we're going to move on to some Rice Krispie treats, some marshmallows and Rice Krispies mixed together. I've spoke about ratios with this before and I think it's just something um, about getting it right yourself. I know that I use one packet of marshmallows to one packet of Rice Krispies, but obviously that varies depending on the size of your marshmallows and the Krispies that you use. But once you've got that ratio right, we're just going to squeeze them on to our structure here for the legs and for the arms as tight as possible. I always just squeeze as really tight as possible, condensing any air in between, just making sure we're just getting it nice and tight and do them layers at a time, let a little bit set and then come back to them um, and add another layer of Rice Krispies. That's what I like to do because if you add too much at once, it, it tends to fall apart more because obviously the weight. Just adding a bit at a time, letting that set and coming back to it. Just squeezing them on for the arms and for the legs in no real particular neat fashion. It's just to give a bit of width to both areas because remember we're going to cover both of these with chocolate and with sugar paste. So moving on to that bit now, I'm just going to cover the whole thing in some more solid chocolate. Again, you can cover these marshmallows um, with ganache first or just ganache, but because of the heat and to make sure that nothing goes wrong with this structure, I'm going to cover the whole thing in solid chocolate. Once that's all done, I'm going to pop it back in the fridge, let it set 
and then we can move on to adding the sugar paste detailing. For the sugar paste, I have colored this sugar paste yellow. I've colored it with some Spectrum Flow airbrush colors, the water base, that's what I use. I add that to the sugar paste, to white sugar paste, and it colors it. So measuring, just using my hand, I'm gonna gauge the strip size that I need to cover this central area. I'm gonna cover this in bits, not all as one piece. So I'm gonna cut this rectangle area out for the center, which is the height and width of the whole front of that central belly area. Like I say, I can add the back, the legs and the arms and the head, all the separate pieces afterwards. So I'm just pushing that on. And you don't need to be too neat with this, just make sure it's all properly attached because we are going to be texturing it. Exact same thing, cut out rectangles with my sugar paste and just pop them on both legs and both arms. You'll notice I've done this sugar paste quite thick. That's because I want to add a nice defined fur texture to it. So now I'm moving on to covering the head, so I'm rolling out a nice big circle area of sugar paste. The bigger the better with this, bigger is better than small because you want to make sure you cover all areas of the head, the front, the back and both sides. So I'm just going to roll that up and drape it over the head, pressing it down onto the chocolate surface, making sure that all areas are attached properly and smoothing into all creases. See it was too big the amount that I made, but that's perfect because you can just trim to size once you've got it on the head. And again, just make sure this is all pushed on properly. Now there's a gap under the chin here that I noticed. So I rolled out a sausage of sugar paste that I wanted to add to smooth out that area and join the very top of the body to the base of that chin area. Literally just a sausage of sugar paste and I'm just smoothing it into both, into the top of the head and onto the body. This is just gonna help give it stability and finish the look of the neck area. Now for the texturing, I'm going to take this nail brush and I'm just going to press it all over my sculpture on every bit of surface that I've got. I'm going to press this in. This is where having a slightly thicker sugar paste is going to help you create this real defined texture. You just want to press in nice and hard all over and work your way all around the piece on both arms, both legs, all on the front of the belly, on the back and on the front and back of the head, making sure this nice textured effect is all over your design.
if there's areas you can't get to, then I'm just texturing with a small Dresden tool just to match up to the design. Or you could use a toothbrush. So looking at your sculpture straight on, work out where the very centre of the face is and follow your line up to work out where your nose is going to be. So it's at the very forward point of that nose area that we created, we're going to draw this oval shape. Just etch it in with the Dresden tool. You don't have to do this, but I'm just doing it because it's going to help me know where to blob on my sugar paste. And I've just created it into a slight V point at the bottom. Then about two centimetres below that, I'm just going to draw this smile in. Again, you don't have to do this, but it's going to show me where to press the shape in and where to add my black sugar paste afterwards. So a, a semi, semi moon, you want a little, a little moon shape area. Then using my finger, I'm just going to press in where I want the eyes. The eyes, I'm going to put, well, you only put in one eye, aren't you? Because it's pudsy, but one, the one eye on the right is just going to go directly above your very point of the left of your smile. And just indent an area there. This is where I'm going to place my black sugar paste eye. I've indented where the other eye would be just to give me an idea of where to drape the bandage later on. But you don't really need to do that. It was unnecessary. But I did it. Okay, so I'm just going to use my finger again just to press up on the sides of those smiles just to give the face a bit of a bit more of a deep expression. Again, you don't need to do that, but I always tend to just take it that bit further. So now I'm going to make the ears. So basically I'm just going to roll out some yellow sugar paste into a circle. And then I'm going to go and texture the whole thing with my nail brush. Now this is going to be cut in half to make the two ears and it is much too big at the moment. But I like doing that because I think then I can shape it when it's on, when I can visualize it better. So I'm just going to cut it in half into these two ear shapes and pop two, well, cocktail sticks is what you want. So a bit of piping gel I'm putting on or edible glue first where the ears are going to go and then just pop in two little cocktail sticks to hold in place the ears and just pop it on and do that with the other one. As I've said, these are clearly far too big, but that's absolutely fine because I'll then take my knife and just cut away at the ears to make them the right shape and size that I want. These ears actually curve back in towards the head as they come towards the head. So this made it ideal for me to visualize that and cut them in properly. Once they're on, I'm just going to smooth them in using a Dresden tool to attach them to the sugar paste at the top of the head. And once that's all in shape, I'm going to leave it to set for a bit and then we're going to move on to stage four. Right guys, so stage four is my favourite bit. It's colouring and that means airbrushing. So I'm using Spectrum Flow Matte Yellow and I'm just airbrushing all over my Pudsy sculpture, but only in certain areas. So basically under the arms, on top of the arms, under the belly here, in between the legs, down the sides of the legs, under the chin, right above the top of the nose there, under the mouth. So you want to think about where shadows would be cast if a light was shining straight on your sculpture. And you don't want to ruin the whole thing by colouring everything. You want to leave highlights in areas where highlights would be. So at the very front of the belly, the very front of the arms, at the very front of the nose area, these are the areas you want to leave as the pale yellow that we've coloured previous. So just use your yellow that you've got in the airbrush to darken up areas where shadows would be cast. And this will start to really bring out the shape of Pudsy. I'm going to use my Dresden tool to just prep the mouth area by making sure it's nice and smooth and the exact shape I want ready for the sugar paste that I'm going to just add in a moment. So what I've done is I've coloured some white sugar paste black using Spectrum Flow black water based again. As I said before, 
I do tend to colour my sugar paste using Spectrum Flow water-based airbrush colours. It takes the colour really well and changes the sugar paste perfectly so that you can then use it as a coloured sugar paste. So to make the nose, I'm taking some of that black sugar paste that I made and I'm basically going to shape it on Pudsy, but get it into a blob that's sort of the right shape press it on and then be careful to shape this onto the pudsy bare nose just pressing it out at the sides to match up with the lines that you etched on earlier with your dresden tool you want this nice and rounded so that it's round at the front and then pushed back towards the sugar paste of the face The eyes are really simple, I'm just taking a blob of sugar paste and pushing it in to that eye area. There's nothing spectacular about this bit, it's very easy, you just press the sugar paste in into a circle. I've actually smoothed this down but it might look nicer if you did it the same as the nose and made it spherical towards the front. I'm just going to take a small sausage of sugar paste after this, roll it up nice and thin and again, I'm going to shape it on the face, but basically you want it into a little arched shape above that eye. And this is going to be Pudsy's eyebrow. Taking another sausage of black sugar paste that's a little bit bigger than that eyebrow one, we're going to fill in this mouth area. You can just paint this mouth area as you could paint the eye and the eyebrow. But I've added these details with sugar paste this time and just smooth them into that etched area that we created earlier with our Dresden tool. Now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to move on to the main Pudsy feature, which is his eye patch. So I'm rolling out a strip of white sugar paste and I'm taking my coloured sugar paste, which I've all coloured with Spectrum Flow water-based colours, to the right colours and I'm just blobbing them on in random places into little circles. So I'm not cutting these into circles, guys. I'm just rolling them into small balls and pushing them onto the sugar paste and pressing them around into circles. Once I've got that filled up and I'm happy with it, I'm going to then use a knife just to cut this straight at the top and bottom, however thick I want my pudsy bandage to be. And then just adding some piping gel onto my face around the back and on the sides, I'm just going to apply that strip. Make sure you've got your positioning right and you're happy with it and then press it all down against the face. You can still shape it once it's on, guys. That's what I've done there with that knife, if you've done it a bit too thick. Then I'm just putting some black matte in my airbrush, and I'm just gonna add a few more deep areas. So on the top of the nose there, again, thinking the same as we were before, where shadows would be cast, but at their very deepest parts now. So right under the chin, right above the nose, right under the belly, around the ears, right under the arms. I'm going to add this black matte. This is entirely up to you. I tend to always add black matte airbrush to everything and sometimes it's not the best choice but I just had to do it with this and I was glad in the end that I did. It just gave it that vivid shadow effect and it really helps to shape your pudsy exactly how you want it. For the board I'm not doing anything spectacular with this. I'm just pressing white sugar paste onto the board and then I'm going to texture it basically using a crunched up paper towel or you can use tin foil or crunched up paper just to give a rough effect on the bottom. Then with the tiniest bit of white sugar paste, I'm going to blob one little ball on the eye, one little sausage on the nose shaped into a little arc shape, a bit like the eyebrow, and that'll be your highlights. And that's your Pudsy done, guys. And then in part five, we're going to move on to how to decorate him. 
to suit you. Right, so part five is the most fun bit because this is where you get to make Pudsy in your very own style. However you want him, you can make him. So you can decorate him however you wish. But for me, I'm gonna show you through what I did. So first priority for me was obviously a tattoo. So I've gone for this oldie English text, um, this kind of cool chest tattoo effect. And I'm going with his name, Pudsy. So I've just hand drew this on, referencing a photo, um, well, actually a few photos of the different old school letters um, and just placing them on one by one. I'm just drawing them on with this edible food pen. Once that's done, I'm gonna take a very thin paintbrush and some water-based black airbrush paint from Spectrum Flow again, and I'm gonna paint around all these lines. So this is just basically a template for me to paint on the deeper colors a bit later. One tattoo didn't seem to be enough, as often is the case with me. So I thought, why not a little sneaky face tattoo? So I've gone for the old school heart and scroll on the side of his face here. Again, I'm just drawing this on with an edible pen, and then I'll colour it later with some water-based black. So I'm moving on to that water-based black airbrush colour now. I'm just going to literally follow all the lines that I've just drew on with the edible pen and just paint them black before then colouring them in at the bottom. I'm going to go for a faded effect with the colouring of this. Um, so nothing too fancy. I'm basically going to just colour the bottom of each letter solid black and then I'm just going to let it fade out towards the top of the letter by just basically watering down my colour as I move up or just letting it run off my paintbrush. And as I start to run out, I'll just flicker it, um, rub it over the area, and a bit of the black residue will come off and it'll create this faded effect as you'll see. So just painting in the bottoms, of all of those letters now and then just fading them off like you can see on that U there just to give this faded tattoo effect which I think is quite cool. So I'm going to just take a roll of black sugar paste and press this in just under the chin. It's just a sausage of sugar paste at the moment but I'm going to press it flat and then using a few bobs of sugar paste I'm going to create a bow tie. So each side of the bow tie, I'm just basically making a bit of an end shape out of sugar paste and fatter towards the outside. Then I'm making it flat on the outside there and just making the exact same thing on the left hand side. Press it into a wedge shape and just pop it on. And then take a ball of sugar paste that's colored black for the middle and just press that on in the middle. This has got to be the most simple and effective bow tie that I've ever created. Often you'll make them on the board um, and cut the shapes, but it just for a bit of fun with a cake like this, this just worked perfectly. So 
So yeah, just roll a ball of sugar paste and just press it on that central area. Make it thinnest towards the top and the bottom so that it gives that sort of rotund shape as if it wraps underneath and over the top of the bow tie. Then I'm just gonna take my knife basically and add some detail. Just three lines on each side coming from a central area pointing outwards and then three lines straight down the middle of that center of the bow. To create the shorts is really simple. I'm just gonna cut this one long strip of black sugar paste, however long I want my shorts, and then cut it in half, making both sides of this strip the right width to wrap around these legs. That's the plan, but that never really ends up working. So I'm adding some piping gel, and I'm just gonna press this on. So these weren't actually long enough to wrap all the way around the legs, but that's okay because I could add some sugar paste um, afterwards and blend them into each other. So for now, I'm basically focusing on the front. So the shorts I'm making in three parts, each leg, and then I'm go, gonna go with the belly area as a separate area of sugar paste. I'm just going to take my Dresden tool and draw on a line at the very bottom of both these shorts. This is just going to create the effect of a bit of a turn up on the shorts, just to add a little bit of something else. So like I said, I've rolled out some more black sugar paste and I'm just wrapping this all around the front of that belly area where I've put my piping gel and just smoothing it on. You want to try and keep this nice and smooth um, so you can take a smoother and smooth it down. Make sure it wraps underneath the belly nice and attaches to the two short areas that you've you've made on both legs. So once that's in place, you just want to smooth it in just using your finger or you can use a tool to just smooth it into those two leg areas. I want to create a bit of a belt on this. So once it's all on in, in um, one piece at the front and I'm happy with it, I'm happy that it's nice and smooth and all attached to the front of that belly, then I'm going to take my Dresden tool and I'm going to draw on a belt. To do that, I'm just going to draw on a line about a millimetre from the very top and then another line about two centimetres down from that line. I'm just using the back of a knife, but you can use a Dresden tool. I'm just going to make two marks here, which are going to be what the the, the loops that the belt goes through and I'm adding some extra detail with that little that little roll tool that's got the, the little points on for the thread. Now a very long strip I'm making here and cutting it in half. This is about a centimetre wide each strip guys because these are going to be our braces. So they're going to come from the looped areas that we just made with the Dresden tool and going to go up and wrap over the shoulder to meet the shorts at the back. Once I'm happy with both of them, pop the piping gel or edible glue just on here. I'd say you can use water, but I wouldn't with this, guys, just in case it drips and ruins your airbrushing. And just pop them where you want your braces to go and then just stick them on.
For the belt buckle, I'm just using a sausage of sugar paste and I'm just gonna shape it on the sculpture itself. So just in the very central area, I'm just wrapping it round into this rectangle shape. on the front and then I'm going to take a really small sausage of sugar paste. Here I'm just going to add just a sausage of sugar paste, one wrapped around that right ear and do the exact same thing with one on the left ear but on top. So just a bit of a cone at each end. So I'm just going to take this small rolling pin and just press it on to this left hand here as I want it to be holding a paintbrush and this is just going to help it set a little bit better when I add the pipe and gel. So I'm rolling out some black sugar paste again. You could just make this paintbrush using modelling chocolate, modelling paste um, or put some CMC in your sugar paste but I'm just using this little plastic tube of cheating and I'm just going to wrap it up in this black sugar paste by adding some pipe and gel so it sticks. This is going to be the main body, the main handle of my paintbrush. I just like the idea of my pudsy being a bit of a wacky artist. So I was trying to think of what he could hold. I was going to make him have um, a tattoo machine to be holding a tattoo gun, but I like the idea of him being an artist, not just a tattooist. So I'm going to stick that on there and I'm really happy with how that looks. It looks so cool like he's holding it. It looks like a bit of a wand at the moment, um, like he's a magician, but we'll change that when we put the end on. So I'm gonna go around and paint gold in all of these areas that I want gold now. So the two braces buckles, the belt buckle, the earrings, and the top and bottom of that paintbrush just to add, add a bit of extra detail to it as well. Once I've got all that done, I'm going to finish off this paintbrush just by making the end. So I'm taking this lump of ivory sugar paste, roll it into a bit of a flame shape and just feathering it with the end of my knife just so it looks like the paintbrush bristles. I'm going to stick that on using some piping gel on top and then just take my knife again while it's on just to make sure it has the right effect on top so just feathering it out by cutting slight little pieces away. I'm going to take some Spetch and Flow red matte airbrush colour and just paint on the top of this paintbrush like it's been dipped in some red paint and then I'm also going to use that on the board so it looks like he's dropped some red paint on the board just to add a bit more detail as the board was looking a bit plain. The last things that I'm going to do is paint the belt black and the paintbrush handle black 
using some Spectrum Flow water based black and that will be the whole thing finished. That's it guys, that's my Pudsy Bear finished and all done. I've absolutely loved it and I really hope that you guys love it too. The really great thing about this cake build is there's so many different ways you can take it in terms of its design. When you've got it to the Pudsy the Bear just stood in its stance, then you can decorate it completely how you want. I obviously took it um, a bit my style, I gave it a tattoo, um, I made it into an artist, uh, dressed a little bit weird um, because that's a little bit like me, but there's so many things that you guys can do um, that aren't that. You can basically put it in any outfit you want, so I'm thinking you could do a ballerina, you could do a little footballer and put a football on there, um, you could do a fireman, a doctor, There's the possibilities are endless, you can dress it however you want to make it your own. And the other great thing about this cake build is you can apply it to your cake life apart from the Pudsy collaboration. Um, you can use this same build, this structure, um, to make loads of amazing cakes. If you do make any cakes using this tutorial, then I would love to see them. And you can send them over to me on my Instagram or on my Facebook. My Instagram is at the underscore Bake King and my Facebook, if you just put in the Bake King, you should find me there as well. So really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, guys. I really enjoyed making it and I can't wait to see all these Pudsy Bear cakes in this collaboration.